Hi, boys and girls. So today's story is all about the digestive system. Today, you will learn about the organs that play a role in the digestive system. Do you know one of the main organs of the digestive system? It's the stomach. Today, you're gonna to learn about several more organs in addition to the stomach. The most, of the most of the digestive system's organs are located in the abdomen, sometimes called the belly. Touch your belly. Your abdominal gland organs are the primary digestive organs and they're found in this area. Before we start our story though, let's take a look at some of the words that we're gonna to hear today. The first word we have today is absorb. Absorb means to take in or soak up a substance, often gradually. This is a word that you should put in your vocabulary books for today. Absorb. This next word is esophagus. An esophagus is a muscular tube that connects the throat to the stomach. Esophagus. This is the second word you should be sure to include in your vocabulary books. The next word I want you to add in your vocabulary books is saliva. Saliva is a watery liquid in the mouth that helps soften food, making it easier to swallow. You may also call it spit. And the fourth word I want you to add to your vocabulary books is villi. Villi are small finger-like threads inside the small intestine through which nutrients from food are absorbed into the body. Go ahead and add villi to your vocabulary books. And the last word you're gonna to hear today is filter or filtering, which means passing through a device to remove unwanted material. For example, the water plant is filtering or removing unsafe elements from our drinking water all day and all night. Now let's get ready to hear the story about the digestive system. The process of breaking down or digesting food is a slow one. Muscular gates hold back, hold food back, as well as open to release digested food along the way. As you hear the story today, I want you to listen carefully and learn where these gates are. These are called sphincters. Listen to where they're located. When I look at you, I can't tell whether you're hungry or whether you've just had a meal. But one thing I do know is that everybody in this room has a digestive system and that all of your digestive systems are working right now. There is a lot going on inside those bodies of yours. You each eat several hundred pounds of food in one year. It takes roughly 20 hours for food to travel through your gut or your digestive tract, a long complicated series of tunnels with openings at both ends. Where does the journey begin? Yes. The process of digestion begins when you put a piece of food in your mouth. When you were born, most of your teeth were hiding under your gums. That's why babies start out with a liquid diet. But once your first set of teeth came in, you were able to eat solid foods. You are at an age right now when you were probably losing some of those teeth and getting in a new set. If so, maybe you were finding it hard to chew certain kinds of foods. Your teeth help you break food down into millions of tiny pieces. The longer you chew, the smaller the pieces become and the easier it is to digest. Human teeth come in different shapes and sizes designed to eat both plants and animals. Let's take a look at the different types of teeth you have in your mouth. The flat, wedge-shaped teeth at the front of your mouth are called incisors. The incisors, both top and bottom, work together like a pair of scissors to bite, slice, and cut up your food. Next to the incisors are sharp, fang-like teeth called canines, or dog's teeth. These teeth tear and rip food apart, the way that dogs do with a piece of meat. Behind the canines, bicuspids help to crush the food. In the back of the mouth, wide teeth with bumpy tops known as molars help grind the food into mush. Next time you bite into a piece of chicken, Sample a piece of cheese or chomp into an apple. See if you can tell which teeth help you the most. Have you ever heard someone call food mouth-watering? What do you think that means? When you smell your favorite food, perhaps spaghetti and meatballs, your mouth probably starts to water as you think about how good it will taste. 
That watery substance, or spit, is called saliva. Saliva comes from small salivary glands in your cheek and under your tongue. It helps keep your mouth damp and softens the food as you chew, beginning to break down for easy digestion. Saliva serves another important job as well, helping to wash away and kill bacteria. Did you know that every day you produce as many as six cups of saliva in your mouth? Can you feel it? Can you taste it? What else do you have in your mouth besides your teeth and saliva? What's the name of that fleshy muscle in your mouth that's covered in taste buds? Your tongue, of course. Not only does your tongue help you taste your food, it also helps push the food around in your mouth, rolling it into a mashed up, wet lump of food. Your tongue pushes the lump of food to the back of your mouth and helps you swallow it. Once food is swallowed, it passes into a food canal called the esophagus. This stretchy tube is only about 10 inches long, leading from the back of your throat, through your neck and chest, to your stomach. Food passes through the esophagus quickly. Muscles squeeze together and push the food into the stomach in about 10 seconds or less. It's a lot like squeezing toothpaste from its tube. Put your hand on the left side of your upper abdomen, just below your chest and above your waist. That's where your stomach lives, behind your lower ribs. This human mixing machine is shaped a bit like the letter J. Your stomach acts like a balloon, expanding to hold the food it receives. The stomach's gastric juices help break down the food into a paste-like substance. These digestive juices also kill any germs that may have been swallowed. Round and round food churns for about three to four hours as muscles squeeze inside the stomach walls. Once it is the substance of a thick soup, food continues its journey into the intestines. There are two types of intestines, the small intestine and the large intestine. The intestines are tubes located in the lower abdomen through which food and food waste travel. Even though there are two different kinds of intestines, the small and the large intestines, they're actually part of the same long single tube. A muscular gate or a sphincter at the bottom of the stomach opens up to allow food to flow from the stomach into the small intestine. The small intestine is about 21 feet long or about as long as five seven-year-olds laying head to toe. Even though it's longer than the large intestine, it's called the small intestine because it's much thinner than the large intestine. This narrow or thin tube, the small intestine, is coiled up like a snake below your belly button. Muscles squeeze together and push the mashed up soupy liquid along the curly small intestine. The food is mixed once more with digestive juices from the liver, pancreas, and gallbladder, other organs that are part of your digestive system. The juices, called enzymes, break the food down and make it more and more watery all along the way. The small intestine, with its millions of villi or finger-like threads, is where some of the most important work of the digestive system takes place. The villi reach out and absorb or soak up usable nutrients in water, passing them through the bloodstream into all the cells of your body. Did you ever hear the rumbling sounds coming from inside you? Chances are they're coming from your small intestines as the muscles contract or squeeze together to break down food. They are the sounds of a healthy gut. Most of the nutrients that are absorbed by the small intestines, many villi, travel to the reddish purple liver, one of your body's important cleaning organs. Your lower ribs on the right side of your body protect your liver. Its function is to clean the blood, filtering or straining out any leftover waste. It turns this waste into bile, one of the juices used by the small intestine to help digest your food. The clean blood with lots of nutrients is carried to the muscles to make them stronger, to bones to make them harder, and to every other part of your body to give you energy to help you grow. Since blood goes to every part of your body, the liver performs a very important function of making sure the blood circulating in your body is clean. This finger-shaped organ is called the appendix. As far as anyone knows, it doesn't seem to be useful to the digestive system, but from time to time, the appendix can become infected or sick and cause a disease called appendicitis. When people get appendicitis, they get a very sharp pain in the lower abdomen 
in the area surrounding the intestines. The pain comes from the appendix located in the lower right side of your abdomen, near your hip bone. When it causes too much pain, doctors remove it. For many years, the appendix was considered a completely useless organ. Only recently have some doctors begun to think that the appendix may help to serve to fight infections. The appendix is located right where the small intestine widens out into the large intestine. The large intestine is where the solid waste ends up. Even though the large intestine is much, much shorter than the small intestine, it's called the large intestine because it's much wider. Parts of food not digested in the small intestine are squeezed out into the large intestine where they remain for up to two days. Water is absorbed from the waste into the walls of the large intestine and passed into the bloodstream. The waste becomes thicker and thicker, piling up into a solid mass known as feces. Feces are stored in the rectum, the final section of the large intestine, until another muscular gate, or sphincter, opens up and allows the feces to pass through the anus, the body's exit point, for solid waste. That is the end of your food's journey. From mouth, to esophagus, to stomach, to small intestine, to large intestine, and to anus. The digestive system's organs are working all the time, day and night, to process food into substances that your body can use, providing you with the nutrients and the energy you need.